I'm going to need a prop for this next one. Mom, this is your cue. So my mom is a really great stage mom. Not only because she listens to poems publicly and privately about her daughter having her ass licked, but, um, but speaking of um, other things that happen with mouths and orifices, I was rehearsing a poem last week. I was in Chicago, um, and I, I was working on this next poem, and um, I sent the following texts to my friend, and full disclosure, my mom was like, oh my God, you got to read those before you do this poem. So this is me to one of my most active text threads. Also, over here in Chicago, as of this morning, working on my show, and my mom came up here, parentheses, I'm in the lounge on the third floor of her building, and was working on this new poem with me about sucking dick. Nancy really does need an Emmy for how good of a stage mother she is. Like, she was really pushing back on some of the lines not being clear, and I argued to not change the text and instead be clear with my performance, and it worked while simultaneously having an intergenerational convo about sucking dick, smiley face. Well, she argued that I needed to clarify that I was giving head under a table, parentheses, which she had other feelings, thoughts about. And I argued that if I better directed my body language and intonation, it's clear. So then we kept rehearsing it and it worked. But just like poor lady, helping her daughter prep a poem about giving head to a stranger, Emmy worthy. Best Stage Mom Award goes to Nancy Rothstein for her work directing, quote, my daughter had a bunch of random dicks in her mouth in the late 90s and early 2000s, and I'm here to help talk about rape culture and consent and feminism. Anyhow, back to Halloween. How are y'all? Thank you. Uh, so this is fresh. Hopefully it's clear, or we can continue up to have a dialogue. Does the text need to change, or do I have to work on my performance? Thank you, Nancy, for being the realist. So good. I know it is. It's good. It's good. I think of you on a Wednesday. The dance floor. Oh, nope. See, I already messed up where we were supposed to look. This is you. This is the dance floor. I'm already fucking it up. Okay. I, okay. Right now we remember. Yep. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Nance. Okay. I think of you on a Wednesday. The dance floor. We are 21. I will end the night with a bouncer pounding his fist over a covered table ushering me to leave. I remember this at a bathroom stall at LAX how the last best summer of my life was then, 14 years ago, even though it ended with me walking into a 303 cab straight home to the suburbs. I call it the summer of love because so many men fell for me in the swollen heat. I'd like to think I love myself now far more than they did then. Not that sucking a stranger's dick under a table, my cheek, oh, nope, totally messing that up. Not that, thank you for being with me here as we try all new things. This is why we do live theater, right? Not that shoving my shins, oh, that's the other part of the behavior there. Mm -hmm. Not that shoving my shins onto the floor of a nightclub, my cheeks choking my self-worth strangled by my tongue isn't a metaphor for how I felt about myself at the time. As if sucking a stranger's dick had nothing to do with how I did not know how to hold the hungry lust. Shoving him down my throat for every man flying across the country to want me as their own. And of them, I gave nothing of myself. I couldn't even swallow their respect. So here I was, on my knees, praying to a man I never met because I did not yet know that I was God. Thank you. 